Hello, welcome to the review video for 1.1.1 uh, binary systems for the uh, IGCSE in computer science. By the end of this video, uh, you should be able to do the following. You should be able to recognize the use of binary numbers in computer systems. Uh, you should be able to convert positive deanery integers into binary and positive binary integers into deanery. Uh, maximum of 16 bits. We'll look at that in a sec. Uh, should show understanding of the concept of a byte and how the byte is used to measure memory size and um, you should be able to use binary in computer registers for a given application such as robotics, digital instruments and counting systems. So you've got all the uh, resources as normal. What we'll do to start with though is we'll uh, go through the core language, have a look at that, uh, make sure that we've got some definitions nice for it uh, and then we can move on to other stuff. So to start with bit, okay so bit very straightforward, uh, is uh, shortened uh, binary digit. So a bit is a binary digit, so really we would understand it as a 0 or a 1. Okay, uh, I'm going to skip to bytes, I'm going to go past nibble and go to bytes first. So a byte is simply 8 bits. For example, uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay, so that is a byte. Right, I'm going to come back to nibble now. So nibble uh, is half a byte. It's a small byte. So nibble is four bits. Uh, so for example, zero one zero one. That's a nibble. Okay. Uh, okay. So the rest of them we've got. Okay. Um, kilobyte. Uh, it's quite simply a thousand bytes. There's some. We'll look a little bit later on the course, but. Is it a thousand? Is it a thousand and twenty-four? Um, often in the exam, it will just if it asks you to calculate, just use the thousand. Okay, it's much much easier to use the thousand. But we can go up with these. So megabyte is a um, thousand kilobytes, and the gigabyte is a thousand uh, megabytes. Okay. And actually, the the uh, the easiest way to write this um, is you, if you wanted to sort of say, okay, well, how many uh, bytes in a megabyte? It's actually um, a thousand, but to the power of two. A gigabyte is a thousand to the power of three bytes. Uh, we keep going. Terabyte is a thousand gigabytes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Deanery. Uh, is essentially what we call in computer science the base 10 number system dealing with numbers uh, dealing with numbers from 0 through to 9 um, okay register uh, now we'll, we'll we'll deal with this in other units as well but a, a register is essentially a, a location uh, within the within the processor for holding small amounts of data for a very short time. Um, don't need the bracket. Okay. We'll talk about different types of registers, current instruction, that kind of thing. But they're little places um, within the processor that are part of the fetch execute cycle where you hold data in the form of binary for a very short time, literally as the processor is using it. Okay, memory, um, there's, there's different types of memory. Um, we're essentially going to talk um, mainly about primary memory. Um, so memory is just the place where you uh, hold um, location for uh, holding data and instructions and primary memory uh, is RAM and ROM, and we'll come back to what those mean later on. And then capacity is the um, the number of bytes that uh, memory location can hold. So, for example, you might talk about um, RAM being uh, four gigabytes. RAM equals four gigabytes, 
And that essentially means that the RAM has a capacity of, of 4 times 10 to the 9 bytes. Okay, it can hold 4 uh, billion bytes. Um, we, don't, we never talk about size when we're talking about memory. Size is, okay, it's about 4 centimetres by 3 centimetres. Well, no, we talk about capacity. What is the capacity of um, that memory location? Okay, so let's have a look at how binary works. Um, to do that, just to put into a bit of context, uh, I'm going to, or we're going to look at um, a different number base system to start with, and that is the base ten number system, which um, we refer to as deanery. It's the number system you use every day. Okay, it's a base ten number system, and it means the numbers that you have available to use are zero to nine. So uh, ten, for example. Is not a number in the, in binary, um, in binary. Sorry, uh, that's um, a one and a zero have been passed into the number base and processed. So you can only use number zero to nine. That's ten numbers: zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, but it's the number system you use every day. And I'm I'm going to just do a quick explanation of how it works because all number bases work the same. Uh, and as long as you apply the same set of sort of rules and and processes. To any number based system, you'll be able to work out what it's representing. So, Deanery, just as a quick uh, reminder, um, let's say, for example, I've got, um, I've been given a sequence of numbers, and that sequence of numbers is um, 4, 3, 7, 2. Uh, that little sub um, suffix of, of 10 shows that it's a base 10 number system. So, I know that uh, I have to apply the base 10 rules to it. So uh, to do that, I'm going to create myself a little table here. And um, I need four columns, so I've got four numbers. And in the first column, I'm always starting on the right-hand side with uh, my ones column. There you go, there's a one. Now, because it's a base 10 number system, if I want to add a column to the left, I need to multiply by 10. So my next column will be my tens column. It, it, again, this is the number system you use every day. And I multiply by 10 again to get my next column, which is the hundreds column. And I multiply by 10 again to get my next column, which is the thousands column. So I have these columns that have value, set values, 1, 10, 100, and 1,000. What I need to do now is to put my uh, number into that system. So I'm going to put my 4, my 3, my 7, and my 2. So I just start from the left and I've put them into the four boxes available. What I need to do now is, is process it. So in this first box here, I've got four times a thousand equals four thousand. Okay. Next box, I've got uh, three times a hundred equals three hundred. The next box, I've got ten. I sort of did it the other way around. I've got, uh, let's cross that out, seven times ten equals 70, we want to stay consistent, and the next one I've got 2 times 1 equals 2. So to work out what 4, 3, 7, 2 when passed through the base 10 number system is, I now have I've added um, the numbers to the columns, I've multiplied the, the, the number of units in the column by the column value, and I'm now going to add them together, which gives me 4,000 372. But without being passed through a number system, yeah, we, we don't know. So, for example, I could have used a different number system, and 4372 would actually have ended up representing something else. So, as long as we understand that when we pass, yeah, we, we have to pass the numbers through the number system, and it's just a question of put them in the correct columns, multiply them by the column value, and add them together. Okay, so let's have a look at converting um, a slightly bigger number. Uh, so we're going to convert this number here, 1100101001, which is in base 2, and we're going to convert it to base 10. So we're going to convert it to deanery. So again, same process as before. So I'm going to start from the left, and I'm going to put my 8-bit binary number into the table I've created. So I'm going to put my 1... One zero zero one zero zero one. So that's put in there. Um, 
and then I'm going to go through exactly the same process as I went through before. So in my 128 box, and, and if the ones and zeros are slightly con confusing, in, in some ways you can just think about it as you've got your 128 box here, and it's either switched on or off. If it's switched on, you included it. You include it. If it's switched off, you don't. Okay. We use ones and zeros. They're, they're kind of, um, sort of abstract concepts in some way, but it's just a question of on and off. So if there's a one, it means we've switched on the 128 box. So 128 box is switched on. So I'm going to say 128 times one equals 128. Some tricky maths there, but we got it. Okay. Next one, 64 times one equals 64. So the 64 box is switched on. 32 box is not switched on as a zero, so that's a zero. The 16 box is not switched on, so we multiply it by zero. Uh, that one's switched on, so it's eight times one equals eight. The four box is uh, not switched on, so we're gonna put a zero under it. The two box, we're gonna multiply by zero, it's not switched on, so we'll put a zero underneath it. And the one box is switched on, uh, so we're gonna put a uh, one underneath it. A little a sort of trick, I suppose, as a little sort of check if you need to. If this right hand most column has a one in it, the number has to be an odd number. It's as simple as that. <clears throat> okay, so we've got 128 plus 64 plus zero plus zero plus eight plus um, zero plus zero plus one. So 128 plus 64 is 192 plus eight is 200. So this number is 201 in base 10. And again, I've just done the same process. All I've done is I have um, taken this number, I've put it into my table. Uh, if it's got a one underneath it, I've multiplied the column value here by one. Uh, if it's got a zero, I've, I've multiplied, all I've done is I said I've multiplied the column value 64 by, by the number in it, one. Um, I've then taken the results of that, I've added them together, and it's given me the result 201 in base 10. Okay, so let's have a look at it in the other direction. So we're going to look at converting um, the number 117, so 117 in base 10, to uh, binary, to base 2. So it's a slightly um, slightly more complicated method, I suppose, but, but still pretty straightforward. So um, what we do is we start with the number 117, and I'm going to put it, above the left hand most column. So I'm going to put it above 128. And I'm going to ask myself the question, can I do 117 minus 128 and give myself a, um, a positive integer, uh, so an integer greater than or equal to zero? And the answer is no. If I do 117 minus 128, I'm going to end up with a negative number. So, um, I put a zero into that box, okay? Because if I had a one in that box, all of a sudden the smallest number I can represent is 128, even if all the others are zeros. If I have one, zero, uh, zero, 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 uh, the smallest number I can now represent is 128, and it's bigger, it's bigger than 117. So what I do is I uh, shift the 117 untouched over to the next column. And ask myself, can I do 117 minus 64? And I can, okay? So the, um, I do that. Okay, so first of all, I put my one in there, because I can do it. And then I do 117 minus uh, 64. So 117 uh, minus 64 equals, and you can probably work this out faster than I have, 36, 46, 53. So it leaves me with 53. So I take 53 over to the next column. And now I can do, can I do 53 uh, minus 132? So I'm going to do minus 132. Uh, and yes, I can. Okay. So I put a 1 in there. And I do the sum. So 53 minus 32. Um, again, you can probably work it out faster than I can. Is it 21? Sounds about right to me. Okay, so 21. I carry the 21 over. Can I do 21 minus 16? Yes, I can. Okay. And what does it leave me? It leaves me, if I do 21 minus 16, it leaves me with 5. Can I do 5 minus 8? No, I can't. Because it would give me minus 3. So I take the 5, the 5 gets carried over. 
Can I do 5 minus 4? Yes, I can. And it leaves me with 1. Can I do 1 minus 2? No, I can't. Can I do 1 minus 1? Well, yes, it's nice and neat. It gives me a 1 and I am finished. And I can now check it. So to check it, I kind of do the math that I've done in the past. So um, 128 times 0 equals 0. 64 times 1 equals 64. 32 times 1 equals 32. 16 times 1 equals 16. 8 times 0 equals 0. 4 times 1 equals 4. 2 times 0 equals 0. 1 times 1 equals 1. So I now need to add those together. So 64 plus 32 um, is 96. Uh, 96 plus 106, so it's 112. 112 plus 4 is 116 plus 1 equals 117 in base 10. So successfully taken that, converted it by using this subtraction method. Uh, it's given us this in binary. We've checked it using this and we're going to give ourselves a nice big red tick because the number we got when we checked was the same as the number we converted in the first place. Yeah, so just as a little addition, because they, they did actually, they do mention this in the specification about 16-bit binary. Uh, so what I've done here is I've just um, kind of extended that table left. So we had the table before, which went up to 128. Uh, you can see the 128 here. So that's kind of the left-hand most column of my, um, of my previous table. And all I've done is I've continued to extend the table left using the same rules. So every time I've wanted to add a new column, I've multiplied by 2. Okay, So it goes um, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, 4096, 8192, 16384, and then 30, 32768. Uh, I did the last one off the top of my head. I hope it's correct. Okay, so let's say, for example, if I was given a 16-bit number, um, and I'm going to have to keep count here, so 1, 0, 0, yeah, 1, 0, 1, 0, if I make it easy for myself. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, is that 16? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 4, yeah, 16, okay. And it's a base 2 number. Uh, I still follow the same rules, Okay. So again, you've got to remember that this would extend off to the right, um, and it would go obviously 128, then 64, then 32, then 16. It's, but I'll just start putting the numbers in. So um, it would just go 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and again, so 0, 1, 0, etc., etc., off to the right. And after that, even though the numbers are bigger, it's just a question of uh, following the same rules. So I would do, um, goodness me, 32,768 times 1 equals 32,768. And I'd do the same, 16,384 times 0 equals 0. And I just keep doing that again and again and again, and I would just add the results up. So I'm going to end up with a pretty big number, but the rule is exactly the same. So just because it says 16-bit binary, there's nothing particularly terrifying. You've just got to do your multiplies by 2 to get your column values, and then you've got to do your 1 times table and some addition to convert it. Okay, so to, to round off this video, let's have a, I just want to quickly come back to this point here, which was that recognize the use of binary numbers in computer systems. Um, I just want to reiterate that Computer systems are essentially, they're, they're dumb. They're, they're bits of kit, bits of machinery that can basically recognise whether something is in one of two states. Uh, it's either on or off, it's left or right, it's a north or a south pole. It's all it can recognise. It can say, okay, something is either in this state or it's opposite state. So 
all a computer system is, is is something that we the human have been able to get to understand uh, on off up down north south light no light whatever it is okay and and binary is just that our way of representing it for us it's easier to understand it and we'll understand it as ones and zeros but you have to understand that every single thing a computer system does from allowing me to record this video right now to me able to see um, this in the web browser to playing computer games to skyping your friend everything has to at some point have been reduced down to a one uh, and a zero or the equivalent of a one and a zero for the computer to understand 